Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sara Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolence to the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the terrorist attack that targeted the Coptic Cathedral in Cairo, which killed and injured many people. He wished the souls of the deceased to rest in peace and for the injured a speedy recovery. His Majesty condemned such terrorist attacks, affirming Bahrain's solid stance towards Egypt in facing such unfortunate events. These stances reflect the bilateral deep rooted relations. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the terrorist attack that targeted the Coptic Cathedral in Cairo, which killed and injured many people. He wished the souls of the deceased to rest in peace and for the injured a speedy recovery. He condemned such terrorist attacks, affirming Bahrain's solid stance towards Egypt in facing such unfortunate events. These stances reflect the bilateral, deep rooted relations. His Royal Highness has sent a similar cable to the Egyptian uh, Prime Minister Engineer Sharif Ismail. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the terrorist attack that targeted the Coptic Cathedral in Cairo, which killed and injured many people. He wished the souls of the deceased to rest in peace and for the injured a speedy recovery. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince uh, condemned such terrorist attacks, affirming Bahrain's solid stance towards Egypt in facing such unfortunate events. These stances reflect the bilateral deep rooted relations. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa patronized and attended yesterday the closing ceremony of Ironman Championship. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports Affairs and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Chairman of Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and Minister of Youth and Sports, uh, Hisham bin Mohammed Rajoder, Minister of Works, Municipalities and Urban Planning, Isam uh, Khalaf, and a number of officials were present. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the achievements made in the youth and sports sector thanks to the constant support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, hailing the success of Ironman Championship this year. He praised the efforts exerted by His Highness Sheikh Nasser in organizing this event and presenting an opportunity for Bahraini youth to participate and gain experience. His Royal Highness commended Bahraini youth who participated in the event, adding that such events strengthen Bahrain's position as a hub for hosting international sports tournaments. His Highness Sheikh Nasser delivered a speech in which he congratulated the winners and affirmed that the kingdom is constantly striving to develop this sport. He underlined the huge aspirations of those in charge of the triathlon sport in the Kingdom of Bahrain and their eagerness to spread it and position Bahrain among the top in this game. He said that this year's event included Iron Kids and Iron Girl, both of which carry noble goals with 322 participants. During the ceremony, the winners were honored along with Bahraini participants and all sponsoring institutions. Institutions.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met the Pakistani Prime Minister's advisor on foreign affairs, Sartaj Aziz, on the sidelines of the 12th IISS Manama Dialogue. The minister expressed his satisfaction with the growing relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the friendly Islamic Republic of Pakistan in all areas and stressed the importance of coordination on confronting common challenges threatening the world. He reiterated the keenness of Bahrain on promoting cooperation with Pakistan in all fields to best serve mutual interests. Sartaj Aziz expressed pride in the evolving bilateral ties and affirmed Pakistan's commitment to further boosting them. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, led the Bahrain delegation to participate in the 10th Conference of Arab Ministers of Education in the Jordanian capital, Amman. The conference is organized by the Arab League Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization and the Jordanian Education Ministry. The meeting discussed the outcomes of a scientific study titled Education in the Arab World and Ways to Develop It, which was prepared by the Bahrain delegation, which affirms the great experience of the Kingdom of Bahrain in this field. The conference also discussed discussed a number of documents regarding education and challenges it faces. Dr. Naimi affirmed Bahrain's keenness to enhance communication among Arab education ministers to exchange opinions and expertise in order to achieve further progress in this field. He stressed the importance of the topics discussed in the conference in which it will contribute to enhancing the unified Arab vision to develop the field of education and improve the quality of the exams. He added that the outcome of the studies presented in the meeting showed several challenges facing the Arab countries in this field, which requires more coordination to overcome these challenges and achieve Arab integration. The minister affirmed Bahrain's pride in contributing to developing the general education in the Arab world, which encompasses uh, the promotion of the inter integration of information and communication technologies through implementing His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's Future Schools Project and the Digital Enabling Project. Dr. Naimi stressed the importance of Arab children's right to education, especially under the current challenges facing the Arab countries. He stressed the need to support Arab children in Jordan, including 165,000 refugees. He said that the conference will issue its decision today at the conclusion of the two-day conference after discussing a number of reports and recommendations. The Manama Dialogue was once again deemed a success as it wrapped up two days of deliberations and debates concerning the region's security and stability. More in this report with Mohammed al Shaban. The 12th edition of the Manama Dialogue came to a close this afternoon at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. The gathering involved a number of sessions and debates that focused on security and stability in the Middle East and the wider world. Oh, it's of immense importance. Uh, people make light of the word networking, but when you've been reading the works of someone for a long time or seeing them mentioned repeatedly in the media, but you've never seen them, let alone having met them, let alone having had conversations with them, uh, these are the kinds of forums and opportunities and gatherings where those things can happen. This year's dialogue came straight after the GCC summit and continued to raise the same concerns of a need to unite in the fight against threats. Well, I think because uh, the Manama Dialogue has established itself as, as the most uh, significant um, such meeting uh, in the calendar, it attracts so many uh, opinion formers and decision makers that it actually has a life of its own now. So that's why, for example, from the UK, and you know we have busy times and we've already had uh, the Prince of Wales and the Prime Minister here in the last few weeks, um, that we've had our Foreign Secretary uh, was here, as you know, on, on Friday, our Minister for the Middle East, we have one of our Defence Ministers here, we've got very, very senior officials from, uh, from across our, our government, our Chief of Defence Staff uh, uh, and other generals here. On top of the summit's agenda was the Syrian situation and the fight against extremism and terrorists. Of course, the main focus, the main issue is against Syria. Unfortunately, the situation in Aleppo is catastrophic, and Turkey is exerting all its efforts uh, for ceasefire and humanitarian aid to Syrian people in eastern Aleppo. I think these discussions and panels uh, will be uh, eye-opener for all of us and for uh, our region and for international community that there should be only a political solution for Syria. And as Turkey, we are always uh, standing with uh, the Gulf countries and uh, brothers in Bahrain. 
The dialogue was deemed a success, as Manama continues to be a hot spot for these deliberations in the name of greater peace. And another edition of the Manama Dialogue comes to an end, but the fruits of the discussions that happened here in Bahrain will linger on as the leaders of the countries of the region and the world work towards further security and stability. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain International News. A very good evening. You're watching the Business News in Bahrain International with me, Hiva Abdel Ghafour. OPEC and non-OPEC producers reached their first deal since 2001 after almost a year of arguing to jointly pare down oil output and ease a global overabundance after more than two years of low prices that overstretched many budgets and spurred unrest in some countries. OPEC agreed to slash output by 1.2 million barrels per day, including 486,000 barrels per day cut by the largest exporter, Saudi Arabia. Non-OPEC output reduction is 558,000 barrels per day, including an unexpected Russian cut of 300,000 barrels per day, the largest contribution by non-OPEC ever. OPEC and non-OPEC countries at this meeting owed 55% of global output and their joint reduction of around 1.8 million barrels per day would account for 2% of global oil supply.